Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sandra and I'm a nurse practitioner. And today I'm going to show you how to take a manual blood pressure on yourself. So in order to take a blood pressure, you will need a stethoscope, a manual blood pressure cuff, and I find it helpful to rest my arm on a pillow because when you're doing a blood pressure on yourself, it can be tricky to hold everything and manage everything. And so the pillow gives your arm a nice position to rest on and helps to hold the stethoscope in place so you don't have to. Okay, so before you take your blood pressure, you want to be resting for about five to 10 minutes in a seated position so that your heart rate and your blood pressure have a chance to stabilize. You don't wanna take your blood pressure right after exercising, after drinking caffeine, after taking a hot shower, because those activities can change your blood pressure reading. And so in order to get the most accurate reading, you wanna be sitting in a comfortable position for five to 10 minutes with your legs uncrossed and just resting. So you want to put your cuff on the bare skin, so not over a sleeve. If you or your patient has long sleeves, you want to push them up, but short sleeves are easiest because you can just put the cuff right onto the skin. Okay, so when you're doing your blood pressure on yourself, you want to put the blood pressure cuff opposite of your dominant hand because it'll be much easier to open and close the airflow valve with your dominant hand. So if this end is not already slipped through this metal piece here, you want to slip that through and you will have this open cuff here where you can slip your arm in. And this particular blood pressure cuff just has this dot here to line up where you want to match it with the artery. But often on these manual blood pressure cuffs, you will see little arrows pointing down. And sometimes it will say artery to know exactly how to position the cuff. So you want to position the cuff about one inch or two to two and a half centimeters above the bend in the arm here. And that is where you will secure it in place with the Velcro. And you only want to be able to insert two fingertips under the edge of the cuff. And that's how you know it's snug enough. Okay, so when you're doing the blood pressure on yourself, you need to be able to see the gauge. And so I find it easiest just to lay it facing me on the pillow like that. And if you're doing the blood pressure on someone else, there is a little clip on the back here where you can clip it right to the blood pressure cuff so that it's easily visualized. Okay, so I have the blood pressure cuff on. I have the gauge where I can see it. This is the bulb that you are going to pump the air into the cup with. So it is a delicate little knob and it does take some getting used to. With some practice, you'll find that you just need the slightest movement to open and close the valve. Okay, so next you're going to get your stethoscope and you're going to place it in your ears with the earbuds pointing forward. And you can tap on the diaphragm to make sure that you can hear. That is particularly important with a stethoscope that also has the bell because on those stethoscopes, you can turn it to switch from side to side. And so make sure you do check that the stethoscope is working on the side you are using. To take a blood pressure, you can use the diaphragm side or the bell side of the stethoscope. Some people prefer the bell side because you can pick up those deeper tones. This stethoscope does not have the bell side, and so we are using the diaphragm. So with the stethoscope, you are going to be listening over the brachial artery, which is just medial to the anticubital fossa. So that'll be right about here. So you can just slip the edge of the stethoscope under the cuff here, and that will help hold it in place. Now, when you're doing it on a patient, you will have that extra hand so you can actually hold it securely in place. But when you're doing it on yourself, this is one way to make do. So we have the stethoscope secure. We have the cuff in place. I have the gauge resting where I can see it. So to take your own blood pressure, you're going to inflate the cuff about 30 millimeters above your expected systolic blood pressure. And so for myself, my systolic is usually around 110, and so I will pump up to 140 on the gauge. And you don't wanna close the valve too tightly because these little knobs tend to get stuck and then you may end up releasing it too quickly. So just gently close it and then pump it up rapidly. And then you're gently going to open the valve. If you open it too quickly, too much air is going to come out at once and you're going to have to repeat the blood pressure. So you want to see the gauge dropping two lines per second. So as you are releasing the air, you are going to see that gauge start to tick, but you want to wait until you hear a solid whoosh, which will be your systolic blood pressure reading. And so you want to hear that whoosh 
and see the number on the gauge. That will be your systolic blood pressure. And then you are going to continue to let the gauge fall two lines per second until you hear that last whoosh, which will be your diastolic blood pressure. You may continue to see the ticking of the gauge, but that is not your diastolic. Your diastolic is that last whoosh that you hear as well as see. If you are getting an abnormal blood pressure, you can rest your arm for a few minutes and then retake your blood pressure. You can also do your blood pressure on the opposite arm and compare the readings. So it takes time and practice to develop that skill of opening and closing the valve, of listening and reading the gauge at the same time. And so it is a lot going on at once and it does take practice. So if you're not getting it right away, don't get discouraged, just keep practicing. So some sources say that if you don't know the systolic blood pressure, you can pump up to 160 to 180 and then start releasing the air from there. Another way to determine the estimated systolic blood pressure is to palpate the radial pulse and to inflate the cuff until you can no longer feel the pulse. If you're doing this method on yourself, I find it easiest to do it on the opposite arm. You can palpate the radial pulse with your opposite hand and you can still inflate the cuff with your dominant hand. And then again, you wanna have your gauge in a visible area facing you so that you can see the reading when you can no longer feel your pulse. And so the whole purpose of determining an estimated systolic pressure is so that you don't cause discomfort to your patient by overinflating the cuff. It also helps to detect an auscultatory gap or silent gap, which is a period of diminished or absent Karakoff sounds between the systolic and diastolic pressures during a manual blood pressure measurement. And this is more often detected in elderly patients. All right, you guys, so I hope this video was helpful to you. If you are practicing doing a blood pressure on yourself, if you're a nursing student, paramedic student, or you're just someone who wants to monitor their blood pressure at home, Taking a manual blood pressure is a really good skill to have. It doesn't require a plug or batteries. And so once you have the skill down, all you need is the cuff and the stethoscope and you can know what your blood pressure is that easily. All right, you guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you get all my new videos. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.